Hi, I'm Mike. This demonstration shows you how you can use Oracle Payroll cost distribution to projects using labor schedules to enhance your business. This slide sets the context for the overall feature and the many functional enhancements that are included. As you can see in the upper left, people and assignments are where it all starts. People get paid on payroll either based on a full-time salary or payroll timesheets that are sent to payroll to pay the individuals. Those timesheets can also be sent to projects, or they can be sent to both payroll and projects. What we have currently that this feature is enhancing is we have a third-party integration using the Oracle Fusion Projects transaction source and running the import payroll cost to distribute payroll cost based on labor schedules. What we're adding with this feature is the ability to use the import payroll cost for the Oracle Fusion payroll transaction source, creating a first party integration. So once Oracle Fusion payroll is run, the payroll is costed and accounted, it will then be able to be distributed in the import payroll cost process through labor schedules and distributed to projects and awards. This process that we are creating or enhancing includes all the complex different payroll activities that generate costs. What this work is setting us up for in the future is to be able to do direct payroll costing and distribute without labor schedules and also distribute leveraging the existing timesheets that came to projects. But those are future unplanned releases at this time. What I'm going to be going over also is the payroll to projects integration setup items. You see that there's a new role that we've created that has the required privileges that you can review. Those privileges have one required activity, the manage project pay elements eligible for distribution, and then have other non-required functionality that are available. Couple items of note. There is an enhancement into the import payroll cost process that you can run the import payroll cost for all business units at this time. Payroll integrates for LD only for assignment and assignment element labor schedules. These are existing features within the labor distribution flow. We have created a new out-of-the-box role called the Labor Distribution Manager for reference for customers. As you can see, this role comes with two new privileges. Manage payroll pay elements for project labor cost has the required activities you need to do to set up the payroll integration. Transfer payroll cost to project allows for the execution of this transfer payroll cost to projects, this payroll activity within the import payroll cost job. I'll illustrate how that privilege is invoked later. With the new privilege of manage payroll pay elements for project labor cost, in the manage labor schedules work area, you will see that there are two new tab items on the bottom of the page, manage project payroll pay elements and manage pay element expenditure type derivation. So the Manage Project Payroll Pay Elements. When you go here, the, uh, the purpose of this screen is to set up the pay elements that should be distributed from payroll. We do give you the option to set a start and end date for these if you want to control them based on a time frame. As you can see here in the illustration, there are three elements that are set up to come over from payroll in two projects the demo regular salary earnings results and the demo car allowance earning results, as well as the VC basic regular salary earnings results. The pay elements should be the pay elements that are costed in payroll. Now I'll discuss briefly the manage pay element expenditure type derivation. Again, this is a non-required setup activity, but new functionality is provided in this overall feature. What you can do now in this area is set up pay elements that will derive an expenditure type and override the expenditure type that exists on the labor schedule. This gives customers the ability to set up one labor schedule for a person 
but have different expenditure types based on the pay elements that are being distributed. I will illustrate the use of this later on in my full demo. As you can see here for the demo car allowance earning results pay element, I've decided to set the expenditure type to vehicles. Again, we give you the control to be able to set this in a draft mode. As you can see on the left, it says it's active and you can set it for a time period. So as you can see here, this is the Bella Clarkson's labor schedule that has one or, or two distribution rules and one that has an expenditure type. So if she got paid a pay element of demo car allowance earning results, that would distribute 60% to the element receptors project and 40% to the GL account identified. But the expenditure type for any pay elements of demo car allowance earning results would override the professional expenditure type on the labor schedule and set it to vehicles. This only applies to assignment level labor schedules. If there is an element level, the expenditure type is used from that version. Another uh, related set of functionality that was released earlier is the expenditure item date derivation that is controlled by a profile option for the labor distribution profiles. This expenditure item date derivation is important to bring up at this time as people are looking at this payroll integration potentially for the first time. Now I will demonstrate the overall feature within the software. As you can see, I have run a payroll for three people. When I drill into Iris Clarkson's results, she has two pay elements. Both of these pay elements have been set up to be transferred to projects as shown on the prior setup page. And Iris has a labor schedule version for this time period. You can see she has two pay elements of car allowance earnings results and regular salary earnings results. Now what I'm going to illustrate within the applications is Iris's labor schedules. So I'm bringing up Iris Clarkson's labor schedules. And you'll see there's multiple Clarksons. And for Iris, She has a labor schedule for one for the calendar year of 2018 that is distributing 100% to the valve rejection therapy project. So if you remember on the prior screens for the pay element to expenditure type derivation setup, we set up the car allowance to be derived to vehicles. Now that we have run a payroll, have labor schedules for the time period for Iris Clarkson and have pay elements set to be distributed, I'm going to illustrate the process of running the import payroll costs. As you can see, you can choose Oracle Fusion payroll. You could also choose a pay element if needed to gather any new or prior pay elements that you may have forgot to transfer in the past. Once we run the job for the consolidation set, which has the payrolls that I know I want to transfer, I will illustrate that when running the process, you will see that an, a human capital management payroll process is initiated to gather the appropriate payroll costs and transfer to projects to be distributed via la the labor schedules. In the hierarchical view, you'll be able to see that within the import payroll cost process, a transfer payroll cost to projects job is initiated. Now let's look at the payroll costs distributed for Iris Clarkson. You can see that there's two payroll costs distributed, one for the demo regular salary earnings results and one for the demo car allowance earning results. I'm illustrating here that the labor schedule was used at 100% distribution for the $600 for the regular salary. It also distributed to the expenditure type 
from the labor schedule of administrative. We had set up a pay element to expenditure type derivation for the demo car allowance earning results, and you'll see that the correct amount of $46.15 was distributed using the labor schedule, but that it will override the expenditure type from the labor schedule and set it to vehicles. Now that we've got a brief demonstration of the flow of payroll costs to projects, I will briefly explain the accounting attributes we've added to allow for proper accounting of the costs once distributed to projects. We've added all of the payroll costing fields to the project's subledger accounting event classes of labor cost, labor cost adjustment, and non-project labor cost. The accounting setup will have to have the knowledge of the payroll costing key flex field as shown on the right side of this page. The flow on the bottom of the page illustrates the standard payroll costing account number generation on payroll. Knowledge of that will be necessary to set up the project accounting appropriately. The left hand side of the page illustrates the additional numerous attributes that can be leveraged in payroll and are now accessible in the subledger accounting in projects in the event classes identified. This concludes the demonstration. Thank you for your time.